Okay, we have reached our discussion time. Um, so, the panelists are up here. I'm going to throw out some challenges to you to, to think about to, as you ask questions or our panelists just start talking. I think one of the biggest issues is what's the difference between a commercial building and a federal building when you have to do, design it and, and find someone to pay for it? So that's one of the issues I'd like to talk about. Um, one of the big issues with mission testing is how do we make an architect understand rather than just looking at the stamp. I actually teach a class in architecture, which is really a joke because I don't know how to design a building, but the students love it. They teach me and they learn from me. And the, their favorite section of classes, I put up a mass spectrum that's an emission test. They say, okay. What does this tell you? You have to specify these two products. And they're all like, oh my god. But that's reality. So that's a question. Um, so the communication, that, that um, and the risk versus hazard approach. That's a biggie, especially in emission testing. So that gives us something to start talking about. Y'all, anybody want to address it? Anybody out in front want to yeah. address it? I could talk about the commercial and, and government. I guess sure Ken can chime in. Um, when you're dealing with a commercial client, you know, a developer who puts up buildings all the time, they don't care about long-term costs. They're starting to. Um, they say they are, but they're not. Um, so it's very difficult for some of these initiatives to be put in place. If I say, yeah, I need to spend $10,000 on dust controls on a job site, they're like, ah, it rains. If you're doing it for the GSA, the GSA sort of has a different level of thinking. They, they create 50-year buildings or 75-year buildings or 100-year buildings, so it's in their best interest to put these controls in place to avoid any problems over the, over the long-term operation of the building. They think about these things prior. They're a smarter client. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, <laughs> um, I don't think I can add anything to, uh, to, to what you said on that. I was going to say about uh, the uh, issue of emissions testing versus um, labeling. Um, yeah, I think, and that's really an issue, as I mentioned, um, federal government has some excellent research resources uh, and a lot of information out there, but in terms of actually putting it in a nice package that somebody can use, we're, we're not there yet. And, um, you know, I think LEED has, has done a lot, uh, but there's, there's a long way to go in terms of that. And, and I think, you know, you got to make it easy. That's, you got to make it user friendly or it's not going to happen. Let's let Alan ask his question. Um, speaking of the federal government, I'm a federal employee who has the misfortune of having uh, sensitivity to VOCs. And uh, uh, one thing that I've noticed over the years when I have the, uh, uh, the problems every time there's a uh, renovation, every time the suite is repainted and especially recarpeted, is going through a bit of a song and dance with federal occupational health. Uh, uh, you know, so to, to get an accommodation for the sensitivity, I have to A, convince the agency that it's a disability that needs to be accommodated. Uh, finding, as a physician myself, it hasn't been dif too difficult for me to find a physician <laughs> to make the diagnosis and do the paperwork, but I'm, I, I've had a lot of fellow employees who have had that problem and not been able to find that. And then even once you get it, uh, the local federal occupational health, at least as of three to four years ago, was very disinterested in the whole notion of, uh, uh, you know, the, the last 2% uh, uh, of, the, of the normal curve as to, as to sensitivity. And uh, uh, getting people, get, getting the uh, uh, rental uh, agency, or the, the people that uh, manage the building that the government rents, getting them to use good materials when they do the renovation is also another great difficulty. So what can we do about that? Uh, <laughs> I think we need to do a better job on, on, on all that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there is no kind of, I mean, one of the things we're talking about with interdisciplinary, a lot of this stuff falls through the cracks because is it the environmental safety and health people? Is it the, uh, you know, environmental programs, which are often separate and so, you know, uh, as I said, I hope we've come a long way since the Waterside Mall days, but um, I'm sure we have a long way to go. And, you know, besides putting more money and focus on these issues, I'm not, not sure really what else to say. Okay, we've got one minute left, and we've got three people. Go fast. 
So it relates to that, Ken. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. But James, I have a challenge to you. So as someone working with designers, we can build the most amazing environments. We can practice what we preach on this. But if there is not an operations that are set to actually carry out the day-to-day -day of the healthy living um, and kind of all these practices, it's very difficult. You highlighted that you do that. I would challenge you, do you have a package, of, package on how you actually sell that inside of selling a healthy building? Like it doesn't end when the walls go up. Have you worked with like workplace health promotion programs? What are you doing with that? It's, it's um, in the Americas, it's mostly on the residential side. We do own and operate 45,000 military homes uh, for the Department of Defense. Um, it's engaging them and, and making different changes in their lives as far as healthy living, clean building uh, materials, um, promoting the outside. We put in bike paths and walkways for all of our residents to reach the community centers or other links on military bases. Um, on the commercial side, more so in Australia, we, we do run ongoing surveys um, to ask the employees, and that's pretty traditional for what LEED asks for as well. Um, I don't know the, the full long term uh, of it, but I will accept the challenge. <laughs> I can work with you on this. We can do Let's it. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we do have to stop. I'm sorry. I'm Stephanie who wants to say something. Can we let Stephanie say one thing really fast? <laughs> I just want to say, addressing your comments, that even if people specify so-called good materials, they're not designed to address someone who's painting in your office while you're sitting in there or for the renovation, they put down the carpet, you come in the next day. They're looking at what's happened two weeks later. And so, it, 